Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to England once again and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a few different styles, but I would say that this brewery are best known for their different kinds of IPAs and they're very well respected in that particular style bracket these days as well. But the beer that we're going to have a look at today is one that I've had a little taste of before just out of the tap and it is a very good beer. It's a little bit of a special release actually, an anniversary beer, but I'm looking forward to doing a proper sit down review of this one for you. So hopefully you guys enjoy my take on this one. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, but let's crack on and see how we go. So for this review then, we are going to head down to Leeds in Yorkshire in the north of England once again, and we're going to have a look at another beer from Northern Monk. So this particular beer is called the 8th Anniversary Double IPA. It comes in at 8.8% .8 ABV, which is apt considering it's their 8th anniversary beer, of course, and it is a New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA, as the name kind of suggests. So uh, yeah, looking forward to having another look at this beer. I did only try a little kind of nip of it actually, but I can tell you this one is pretty damn nice actually. So uh, yeah, nice to return to Northern Monk once again, of course, and I didn't expect to do it quite as quickly as I have, but I just came across this beer and I thought, you know, we really have to have a look at this one. I tried it on the tap, I thought I need to do a proper review of this one. But uh, yeah, this beer was bought at the Caledonian beer, uh, craft beer merchant along in uh, Dunfermline where I go to the football quite often and I think I paid about £7 or something like that for this one, maybe £7.50. So that translates to roughly about €8.50, Euros 50, 85 Swedish kroner in that case and then probably somewhere in the region of like $9.50 American. So a little bit more expensive but it is a New England easy double IPA so you will pay a little bit more for that and it has come up from England as well so transport costs and all of this sort of thing. But uh, yeah, this is a good beer, so looking forward to it. Let's crack on with this then and see how we go. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done it from Northern Monk before, and you will no doubt see some more added to that list at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the English beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity, but fairly regularly at the moment, because I am at home in the motherland of Scotland, and the English beers are fairly easy to get here. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit, about Northern Monk then, on to my brewery notes. So, Northern Monk, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Leeds in Yorkshire in the north of England, and they were founded back in 2013 by Russell Bissett. So he actually started home brewing in his mum's basement, and then he launched the company a, a little while later, officially, at the Sparrow Beer Cafe in Bradford. Over the next little while, he continued to build up his sale and develop new recipes and things like this. But then in August of 2014, they moved into the old flax store in the city of Leeds at Marshalls Mill. And they've been working to expand their capacity at this site ever since. So they say that they like to pay homage to the old monastic brewing in England that went on for centuries, but is largely overlooked these days. Of course, most people, when they think about monastic brewing, think about the Trappist breweries in Belgium and the Netherlands and in other places, of course, these days as well. Not so often that you would relate to... Uh, you, you would think about monastic brew when it comes to England, although these days there is Tint Meadow actually. But at the brewery, they have the refectory, which is their bar and restaurant, and I have to say it looks very good. So I do hope that I can get down there at some point fairly soon and film a little out and about video actually. That is definitely on the cards for the future. But uh, these days, a number of their new releases come through the Patrons Project, and this is where they team up with other breweries for collaboration brews, but also local 
uh, restaurants and things like this and also local artists as well quite often do the artwork for these beers but the main brewing operations these days take place in the refectory on Sydenham Road in Leeds and this has a total capacity of 24,000 hectolitres but recently they launched a new project called the OFS project which brews very small batch beers in the original brewery in the old flax store and I'm sure it was some kind of like laggers and things uh, Keller laggers and stuff like this that I'd seen them producing in that uh, series recently too but I do hope that I can try some of those at some point I maybe need to do an order direct from uh, Northern Monk to get hold of some of those but uh, yeah that's definitely something for the future but these days they've also got a second refectory over in Manchester which you know I guess you could say probably is the English craft beer capital there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on there and the current head brewer is Adam Lyle and as of November 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 270 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and as I've mentioned these guys are a very very well respected brewery in England and definitely one of the top New England IPA producers but there's a whole host of very good New England IPA producers down in England these days you know Cloudwater, Track, Pressure Drop, Wylam, Northern Monk, uh, probably quite a few, Neon Raptor do some very good stuff, Dea, Verdant, you've got all of these guys producing some very nice beers, Glasshouse as well actually is another one that I need to try and beak too is another brewery that's on my list but um, yeah that is all I can really tell you about Northern Monk for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah that is it for the moment so let's get on and actually have a look at this beer itself then so just to let you have a little look at the uh, at the artwork on this one it does look very very nice there you can see northern monk you can see the nice monastic monk there that is very well recognizable symbol these days and then you have eighth anniversary double ipa um, you can see a little bit on the side here they are supporting uh, the living wage and uh, ward hadaway i'm not sure exactly what they do but you can see there's a few things on the side here if it's going to focus oh doesn't want to maybe it's the condensation there you go so yeah uh, number one what is that the UK's 100 best small companies 2021 that is pretty cool we are a living wage employer we support that and then the society of independent brewers as well there you go lots of different things on here and if you look closely at the artwork on this hopefully the the, the camera will show this up quite nicely but I think you can see all the different photos and uh, and things here it's going to focus there you go you can see i think this must be either the workers or the uh some of the patrons actually but that's also on this side as well so that's a nice little touch actually to say thank you to the people that have supported the brewery you can see it is a nice gold top on this one it's a 440 milliliter can and i told you the price earlier i think it was about seven pound fifty for uh, this one so it's a nice little treat this but as we said earlier it's an 8.8 percent new england hazy whatever you want to call it imperial double ipa the hops in this one are citra mosaic idaho 7 and strata we've come across all of these before four different american hops citra 14 percent alpha acid a uh, big juicy mango colors with a big citrusy lemon limey zesty quality to it mosaic again 14 percent alpha acid big juicy tangerine note sometimes a little bit of pineapple can even give you a little bit of blueberry in instances idaho 7 I think it's uh, might be a bit less, but I think it's might be about 14% alpha acid as well. It gives you these lovely soft tropical fruit notes, you know, like papayas, apricots, all of these kind of things, but quite juicy in its mango character as well. Strata, a fairly new hop to the game actually compared to the others, uh, but it tends to give you this really nice kind of melony and kind of strawberry type note, about 12% alpha acid, and it's got quite a distinctive kind of floral uh, note to it as well, quite a pungent floral aromaticity i don't know if you can hear but storm arwen is uh, going a little bit mental out the back tonight i was meant to go to the football tonight with my dad but instead we're streaming it through the internet on the pay for access thing so uh yeah doing that i was going to go to fir hill in glasgow and see the pars play in the scottish cup against partick thistle but it's no happening unfortunately but uh yeah we've got this to have a little look at instead so my dad and i'll be sharing this in time for kickoff which will be nice but yeah let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting See if I can get the thing open first though. There we are. Yeah. When I saw this one, as I say, I was very curious about it then. Uh, I got to have a little taste of it from the tap in the shop, which was uh, which was quite nice. Then I was like, yeah, I need to get one of these. 
and review it at home. So yeah, I think that will do for the moment while we have a little look at the appearance of the beer. So uh, yeah, there we go. So as you can see with this one, it looks absolutely fantastic. I think we've poured maybe about 75% of it into the can, but you can see that uh, we've poured 75% of it into the glass, um, but you can see it's poured very, very nicely. You can see there's about a quarter finger of a frothy. I would say, kind okay, of, I would think that's actually a perfect white head there. It's faded away to be a really nice kind of thin foamy layer, and then round the edge of the glass, it's um, leaving a nice little bit of a thick uh, ring to it, but it looks very, very nice. So if we shine the light through this beer, I'm going to say straight away, it is pretty damn opaque. This is a very soupy and gloopy New England IPA, I have to say. And remember, when it comes to these uh, New England beers, the level of haze depends on the yeast that you're using and also the oat content and the wheat content. There's not really a rule when it comes to this about the, the level of haziness being related to the alcohol content. But, you know, logically speaking, there is more wheat and oat in a in a New England double IPA um, than there is the pale ale or the IPA or so on. So theoretically, it should be a little bit um, hazier, but not always. This is definitely though one of the superior and gloopier New England IPAs, or double IPAs I should say, that I've come across in recent times. So for an 8.8% .8 of the level of haze that you've got on this isn't too surprising to be quite honest with you. But uh, yeah, in terms of colour, I would describe this beer as being a nice kind of bright pale yellow, a little bit of a kind of mango pineapple juice type colour this one and as always say I like to compare the colour of these beers to different fruit juices because that's just what their appearance reminds me of but remember the colour of your beer depends on one the type of malts that you use that goes a long way to determining your EBC rating the wort boil the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role the longer you boil the wort the more the sugar is caramelised thus you get a darker colour of beer uh, and any barrel uh, aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect that too but when it comes to this style you don't really have to care about that but as you can see beautiful looking beer this one and the appearance is not surprising when you consider what style this is but uh, yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma of this one then and just uh, and just see how we go but I think this one will be pretty damn nice actually but nothing surprising about the appearance Oh, yeah, <laughs> this is pretty damn nice, actually. Um, you can smell that this is a New England double, um, absolutely. But I would say it's got, it's kind of interesting. So, as I've told you in a number of reviews before, um, when it comes to New England double IPAs, there's a few different directions that you can take these beers in. They can be more farmhousey and yeasty, rye leaning and grainy, wheaty and bitey, oaty and creamy, barley malt leaning and bready, or a little bit more kind of brown sugar leaning and sweet. But quite often these beers will display a few of those characteristics, although oaty, wheaty, barley malt leaning and more sweet ones, those are what are more common in Europe. The rye leaning and grainy and farmhousey ones are a bit more common in New England itself actually. But um, yeah, this one smells absolutely lovely. So a basic overview I'd say that this one has a, it comes across as really oaty and creamy in the aroma. It's got a lovely kind of soft, juicy, fruity character to it. And the green component for me, um, it's actually quite soft again. I, I think this is a, just a really soft and big, juicy, creamy New England IPA, this one. But let's put the rest of it in and we'll see if we can get a bit more of uh, an aroma out of it. Because it's quite, I don't know if it's just too far away or what. But uh, yeah, we'll put the rest of it in the glass and just let it set a wee bit and see what we can get out of it but uh, yeah lovely pour that there and you can see yeah nice <laughs> half finger head on it yeah I can smell it a bit better now yeah so uh, on the malty side of things this one it's kind of what you'd expect you can smell a bit of that lovely um, it's got a very soft but very smooth and kind of fresh white bready characteristic to it but there's a lot of oatiness to this one I would absolutely say that so I think you've got that barley malt layer in there but the barley malt is a little bit difficult to detect because of how thick the oats are you can smell the wheaty notes kind of thickening the bread up as well but at the back of the nose you do just get a little hint of that um, you know that wheaty bitiness in there so that lets you know that the wheat is present but on top of that you've got a lovely kind of oaty creamy uh, you've got a lovely kind of oaty creamy aspect to the beer as well so um, yeah the the malty base into this one I think is um, is absolutely lovely so 
yeah, a big, there's a lovely, just big, old school type vibe about the malt base in this one for sure. It does lean a little bit towards what I would have expected from, you know, some of the, the old school Swedish New England IPAs that I had, the Narangi, the Amazing Haze, these kind of things. It's got a bit more of that bready, oaty, creamy sort of thing about it, but it is absolutely lovely in that sense. There is a slight degree of sweetness to this one in the malt base as well. Um, you do get a little bit of that kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy type vibe to the beer. But when the thing's 8.8%, 8 8 near enough 9%, you would expect that to be honest with you. Usually the sweet side of the beer covers up the uh, the brown sugary notes. Or the, usually the brown sugary notes cover up the boozy aspect of the beer, if that makes sense. Brain's not working today, guys. But yeah, um, I really like that for sure. Um, yeah. I think that's everything we need to say about the malt base. It's quite a straight shooting malt base for me, to be honest with you. When it comes to the green component, I think there is a wee bit of, there's a teeny little bit of earthiness in there, but not a lot. The green component for me leans towards quite a wet floral aromatic component. So you can smell that around the front of the nose, but there's also a little bit of grassiness in there and a wee touch of zestiness. So I really like that when it comes to this beer. It does go together very, very nicely. Um, yeah, the grassy note for me, when you take the aroma in a bit more deeply, you will get a bit more pungency to the floral aromaticity, but you'll also get that kind of juicy, um, you also get the juicy fruitiness in there, and I think that softens up the grassy side of the beer. I would have expected a little bit of a more kind of pungent green component to it, considering that strata is in there, uh, but I mean, you have to remember that New England double IPAs rely mainly, or New Eng any New England IPA relies mainly on late edition hops in the last half hour or dry hopping. And it's usually the early edition hops, which you'll find in West Coast IPAs. Those are the ones that tend to give you the big dankness, actually. But I'm sure we'll get more of a kind of green component out of this one in the actual flavour. But yeah, on the fruity side of things, it's absolutely lovely. Um, big, juicy mangoes from the from the the citra in this one absolutely but i think for me the most prominent hop in this is actually the uh, the idaho seven this is this beer's got a lot of, the, the the juiciness of the mango is going to come from idaho seven as well i should say but you do get a nice big kind of apricot you know and there are some soft juicy pineapple and big things like that so yeah i really do like how that um how all of that kind of pieces together in this one so uh yeah the aroma Aroma wise, this one I think goes together very, very well. So it has a big, um, it has a big thumbs up from uh, from me on the fruity side of things. Yeah, big juicy mangoes, bit of apricot, you know, those kind of papaya notes in there as well. A wee bit of pineapple, but I do get that nice tangerine orange from the um, from the the mosaic in this as well. And you can get a little bit of that um, almost like gooseberry strawberry type thing from the the strata as well i've always found that strata gives you just quite a candied strawberry note and you can certainly smell that right in the kind of top of the front of your nose just get that candied strawberry type thing it's lovely aroma this so as i always say take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of these beers before you get stuck into them but i think it's about time that we have a taste of this then so yeah this one is the eighth anniversary double ipa a new england hazy imperial double whatever you want to call it ipa 8.8 percent abv from northern monk in leeds in yorkshire in the north of england uh, this is a good beer looking forward to tasting it again happy anniversary to uh, northern monk of course Slanja, skull cheers Oh yeah, it's even. I actually think that's even nicer out of the can than it was on tap. Yeah, but I don't know if it's just. I as I say, I don't drink too many beers on tap these days. It is mainly bottles and cans. I don't really drink outside of the the videos that I film, unless I'm you know I, you know even when it comes to tap beers, I would I only really drink when I go to. Um, I only really drink when I actually go and film outside these days, but this is just lovely. So. Massive thumbs up to Northern Monk. This could be the best beer I've had from them, come to think of it. So, um, yeah, but that said, Faith. I'd really enjoyed Faith, actually. That was a very good one. But the Life and Death, uh, the double, the Big IPA and the Stout, that, those were also very good as well. But this is very nice. So, big thumbs up to uh, Northern Monk for this. This is awesome. Ooh. 
Ooh. Yeah, so first impressions of this beer. It's a big, juicy, oily thing, this one. But at the same time, it's got a lovely creaminess to it. It really finds that great middle, that great middle ground between the kind of creamy and oily side of the New England spectrum. And I really like this, actually. It's got a good bit of sweetness to it as well. Green component isn't too pungent, actually, but the fruity character in this is just really, really well done. So this is an awesome beer. This could well be the best one I've had from Northern Monk, actually. So, uh, yeah, but when it's your 8th anniversary, you kind of have to do something special. So I'm not, I'm not surprised that this is a good beer, but it's, it is actually better than I remember it being on tap, in fairness. So, yeah, let's break the flavour down as we always do and describe it a wee bit more in depth. So, um, yeah, on the... Um, so... On the malty side of things then, it is actually kind of what you'd expect, to be honest with you. This is one of these beers that the aroma really does translate quite well into the flavour, actually. So straight away across the middle third and back third of your palate, you do get a little kind of sprinkling of um, that kind of bread crust, you know, like a fresh hedgehog roll. You do get a little bit of that there. But on top of it, you can feel the nice kind of quite crisp but still fresh barley malt, the white bready kind of thing, you can really get that in this beer. So a bit of bread crusty backbone, a little bit of barley malt, uh, kind of white bread on top of that. And um, yeah, I really like how that uh, how that goes together in this one for sure. Um, if we focus on the middle third of your palate then, let's do that. So bread crust, a little bit of a kind of fresh white bready character, then you've got the thicker kind of, you can feel the wheat just thickening out the uh, flavour of this beer a little bit more. So or the multi character on this one I should say and we'll come to why we can pick that up a little bit later but yeah you can feel that nice slightly thicker wheaty layer on top of the softer white bread and then down that middle line of your tongue you've got quite a wide creamy oaty layer coming out of this one the oats the further you go into the aftertaste with this of course the oats do start to give you a little bit of, uh, of sweetness as well and again I think that works really nicely But yeah, that is very, very nice, I have to say. Um, so on top of that kind of OT layer there, the OT layer really is just big and thick and creamy. It's just like blankets, uh, the top of that wheaty layer there. But in the dead centre of your palate, you get a nice big circle there. You've got that kind of Werther's Original big, uh, you've got that big Werther's Original OT creamy character. Um, just kind of, you can feel the messing my brain up you've got that nice oaty wheaty, you've got that oaty creamy character underneath but then you get that lovely big creamy butter candy butterscotchy thing from the Werther's original just sitting on top of it if you go into the dead center of your palate you do get a little bit of an almost straight up caramel there but for me yeah, it is more of a kind of Werther's original kind of butterscotchy butter candy thing and for me that's the common thing you get with these new england ipas they do tend to lean more towards that rather than the more oily caramel that you'll get from the uh, from the west coasters actually so that's worth bearing in mind mm. but yeah um, I think potentially as you go out toward the edges of the palate you might get a little tiny hint of a McVitie's digestive biscuit but I think that's very very minimal to be honest with you this is more of a big oaty creamy and butter candy, butterscotchy, sweet beast, this one actually. It goes together really, really well. But other than that, I don't think we have anything else to say about the middle third of your palate in this. So let's focus on the back third of your palate then. So the border region between um, the border region between uh, middle third and back third of your palate, you get a nice kind of bready build up there. It's a white bready note, right enough. So but there is a wee bit of bread crust underneath. But the base of that the base of that um back third of your palate as i say there's a little sprinkling of that bread crust you know there it does get a wee bit grainier the further back you go you can feel a nice slightly thicker white bready layer there from the barley malt then on top of that <clears throat> you do have quite a dense wheaty layer and you can feel that the wheat is a little bit more bitey towards the the back the very back of the palate there so that's your key giveaway that there is wheat in this beer it's just a level of bitiness that you get out of it actually but um yeah 
I think this goes together uh, really nicely for sure. But on top of the um, that kind of wheaty layer, you do get a nice big thick um, yeasty element out of this one. So you can feel that nice big doughy yeasty kind of thing. There's like a big condensed thick white bready note. There's not really a spiciness to it in this one. Um, but it does have just a little bit of that kind of flowery dryness, like a fresh bready sort of thing. You can feel that just sitting on top of the wheaty layer on that back third of your palate. But as I always say, the back layer, the back third of your palate, the flavour is a little bit taller there, and you can feel as you come further forward, it just condenses down a little bit. And as you go into the middle third of your palate, those flavours just squash together a wee bit. And uh, yeah, I think that works uh, really nicely in this one. So the malty used to say that this beer is very, very good, but a big, thick, creamy, oaty sort of thing. Let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then. Green component first. So yeah, on the, um, on the kind of back corners of the palate, there is definitely a wee bit of a kind of earthy, uh, note to this one so I think that's most likely to come from the mosaic in this beer um, but you've got a lovely the, the green component in this one I think the more that you drink of this beer the bigger the green component comes but the earthy note in this is tiny as you come further forward along the sides of your palate it's got a lovely um, it has got a lovely kind of big floral aromatic uh, character to it and I think that um, that does go together uh, really nicely. I mean, it does give you that. It's quite a big, bright, and quite pungent floral aromaticity. And again, I really like how um, how all of that pieces together. Uh, and it does get a wee bit more kind of pungent and almost slightly spicy as you reach the front corners of the palate. But round the front curve of the tongue, the beer is a little bit lighter and grassy. And it's also got a little bit more of a kind of. Um, it also has a little bit more of that kind of citrusy, zesty type thing to it as well. You've got that nice little bit of a lighter grassy kind of quality around the front curve of your tongue with a wee bit of citrusy zest there. And it's not surprising when you consider what hops are in this, but I think it's most likely citra that is going to give you that big zesty component on the grassy side of the beer. So yeah, green component in this is really nice. That big floral note there I think is most likely to come from the strata. So the earthiness is from the mosaic. The green, comp the big floral aromaticity I think is from the strata. Then round the front curve of the palate, the grassiness is from the, uh, the citra. I think so uh, yeah I think this is very very nice so um, on the um, fruity side of things I don't think we've got anything else we really need to say about the green component of the beer let's focus on that front third of your palate so border region between front third and middle third of your palate again there's a little bit of a, bre a white bready build up there the base of that front third of your palate is um it is quite a nice smooth white bready sort of thing um on top of that though you get that nice you actually maybe even get a little bit of a, an oaty smoothness in there which is kind of interesting but on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer and i think all four of the hops are kind of showing themselves up quite nicely in this one so when you go to the back of that front third of your palate there's definitely that slightly more pungent passion fruit absolutely that's the citra all the way but as you come further forward, you can feel it mellows out a little bit and you get this big, juicy, mango-y character. There's maybe even a little touch of peach in there mixing in with a passion fruit, actually. It has got a wee bit of a peachy sharpness to it. But lovely, big, juicy mango qualities in there. And then as you reach the kind of front half of that, um, as you reach the front half of that middle, um, third, that front third of your palate, sorry, you start to get the softer side of the Idaho 7. You get the apricot and the papaya type flavours in there and there is maybe a wee touch of pineapple uh, there as well just kind of coming out on the top of that dead centre of the, the the front third of your palate there but as you push into the the uh, the front half of that front third of your palate that's where mosaic kind of takes over a little bit so you can feel a bit of that juicy orange taking over for, like kind of just that juicy oily tangerine orange there just sitting there but I think as you push further forward from that you get this little bit of a kind of gooseberry type note in there and then as you reach the kind of front edge of the palate it's interesting because you get this little bit of an oily kind of candied strawberry which is strata strata is the one that's going to give you that but then as you reach the dead 
edge of your tongue you get a bit of that lemony limey kind of character mixing in with the grassy zestiness there and that's citra the grassy zesty character as i said is citra but it gives you that wee bit of a lemon limey note so the, the the way that the front half of that front third of your palate goes together i think is really interesting and quite a unique quirk to this beer but the further you go into the aftertaste i think the strata starts to show itself a little bit more and you just get that candied strawberry and slightly gooseberry strawberry type thing from it um so yeah i really like that but the other thing to remember is that sometimes citra can give you a wee bit of this gooseberry lychee type thing so maybe that's contributing to it as well and helping promote the strata flavor so that's a little bit of food for thought actually But yeah, fruity side of this beer is absolutely lovely. It's really well balanced and, as I said earlier, quite an, an oily, fruity character. But uh, yeah, I think we can round off the review now with a look at the mouthfeel. So for me, this is definitely uh, bottom end of full body. It's a really, really thick uh, New England IPA, this one. Really, it leans towards that. It's got a good balance between being oily and slick and being very creamy at the same time. So again, I can really appreciate that about um about this beer and on the um i would say on the the the, the hoppy bitter side of things what could we say about this i think this is actually a fairly standard 30 ibu beer i think at the absolute most it'd be 40 ibus and that's a bit common for new england double ice face to put the bitterness up a bit but i wouldn't be surprised if this is a straight up 30 um Yeah, the bitterness, it does give you a nice dankness there, but not quite the same level of bitterness, actually. But I think it works. The level of bitterness this one has is quite nice. So 30, maybe 40, I'd use a push for me. Uh, malt base is very, very smooth. As we said underneath, it's got a little bit of bready character and it's got that big smooth oaty sort of thing with a degree of sweetness. Then the fruits are really nice and oily. A good balance. It leans a little bit more towards the tropical side of things for me, but the further that you go into the aftertaste, it shows you a little bit more of that oily kind of candied strawberry sort of thing and a wee bit of a citrusy orange for sure and there is a bit of zest on this beer too but like i've said this is a beautiful beautiful new england double ip if you come across this one try it this is i think the best beer i've had from northern monk thus far so uh yeah i think we can leave it at that then this one is the eighth anniversary double ipa 8.8% ABV, New England Hazy, Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Just a beautiful, beautiful beer. So a big, massive thumbs up and uh, congratulations to Northern Monk Brewery on their 8th anniversary. Let's leave it there. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Northern Monk. And I'm sure we'll review more from these guys very soon. Check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Slanja, skull, cheers, and catch you guys very, very soon.